to Brexit. There has been lots of talk about interruptions to imports and supplies. Uh, less than two weeks to go before we're supposed to leave. How much have businesses and consumers been stocking up on essentials? Something we've spoken about a lot. Uh, Nina yes. has been looking at the evidence. Yeah, stockpiling is one of those words we keep hearing, isn't it? And mm. what it basically means is to buy lots of something to make sure you don't run out. Mm -hmm. And getting a clear picture is really tricky, partly because businesses don't necessarily want to reveal the extent to which they're stockpiling, because if they do, they're worried that people will panic buy. And yesterday, there were rumours that Sainsbury's are going to start rationing the amount of certain products you can buy online. That's something they haven't denied or confirmed. And we know last week that Morrison said they are stocking up on some cupboard essentials. Um, as for consumers again that's really tricky but a recent survey found that 10 percent of consumers said they've started stockpiling and 26 percent of people said they're already thinking about it and that mixed picture is what we found when we spoke to these shoppers in bradford i'm going to make sure i've got baked beans in in the cupboard because you can survive on baked beans and like cat and dog food i think because also i think suddenly the shop runs out of food i want to make sure i can provide for my family. I have a friend who is very worried about it and has started buying extra things. Nothing massive, but just kind of on the essentials. My wife is trying to stockpile. She's just a very cautious person, and, and rightly so, but I'm, I'm possibly less cautious. Maybe, maybe I'm a fool, I don't know. Uh, so, kind of mixed picture there. And what's the advice then, Nina? Well, the British Retail Consortium, the trade body, have said um, you don't need to stockpile because really supermarkets should be worrying for us. They think that they are starting to stockpile even if they're not being completely transparent about it. And although it does feel particularly painful as we go through the Brexit process, it's worth remembering that most of our MPs and everybody in Brussels want us to reach a deal that would see the supply chains carrying on as normal. That is the objective. Yeah. But at the same time, if you're worrying, if you're fretting about having your cupboards full, there's nothing wrong with getting those extra baked beans in, if you've got the cupboard space. Mark Spencer are planning a big shift towards food at its stores. Uh, this is what they've said. Nina has been looking a bit more at that and uh, some other of the big business stories around today. Yes, I have. Good morning. That's right. Marks and Spencer will be replacing their clothing aisles with food aisles, well, some of them, in a bid to target the big family shop. They say at the moment there's a perception that their food range is limited, so they'll increase the number of stores selling all 1,600s of their products. They did recently secure a deal with Ocado, offering all their range from home deliveries. Um, the budget hotel chain Travelodge has seen a 10% rise in revenues to just under £700 million last year. The chain has just under 600 hotels in the UK with plans to open 100 more over the next five years. That will create thousands of jobs. I'll be talking to the boss in the studio just before eight. And beware the dragon. Independent research has found that new businesses which chose more traditional routes investment of investment on average grew 12% more a year than those chosen by the TV dragons. They also found that the dragons missed some potentially winning investments like the trunky suitcase. Their sales reached £9 million last year. So be careful what you wish for. The BBC has said, though, that, um, you know, the Dragons do offer invaluable advice, so it's not all about profits. It's difficult, isn't it, always to yeah. spot the right thing, you know? know? Yeah, sometimes yeah. you miss a I winner, mean, don't you? I mean, it is their job, though. <laughs> <laughs> Nina, very good point. You put, <laughs> I love you're your putting style. putting yourself forward for a future <laughs> Dragon there, Nina. Thank you. Uh, the budget hotel chain Travelodge has reported rising annual sales and profits in its latest results, which are out this morning. Nina? It's going to be talking to the boss. Good morning, both. Yes, good morning. It fits into a wider picture of uh, budget brands doing well. And lots of you will have spent a night in a travel lodge at some point. It does have just under 600 hotels in the UK and there are plans to open 100 more over the next five years, which will create thousands of jobs. But the company has had a rocky few years. In 2012, it had debts of around £500 million and entered into a form of insolvency. But this morning, it's reported revenues up by nearly 10% to just under £700 million. So how have they done it? Peter Gowers is the chief executive of Travelodge and he's with us now. That's quite a turnaround. How did you manage that? Well, I think first and foremost, it's the efforts of the 10,000 people who work at Travelodge. But we've also invested hundreds of millions of pounds in raising our game on quality for our customers and adding more choices like our super rooms and new Travelodge Plus hotels. So it's simple, just getting the product better. Um, it does fit into a wider picture, though, doesn't it, of budget success? Well, the budget sector is growing dramatically. You'll have seen it last week with brands like Greg's, but also in hotels. 
Budget hotels is now worth more than £2 billion a year. And just this weekend, a quarter of a million people stayed in a budget hotel. So it's a big market now. And that's partly because businesses are sending their employees to budget hotels. That feeds into a wider picture of uncertainty. How's that affecting you? Well, I think businesses are choosing budget more and more. Because the quality's gone up, it's no longer a stigma to stay in budget hotels. Okay. And we're seeing a lot of businesses do that. The economy is slowing down a little bit, there's mm -hmm. no doubt about that. But what we're seeing is, in those sorts of times, people look for value. And right. that's sort of what Travelodge has been known for for 30 years, I guess. One of the big issues at the moment is uh, workforce. We know that immigration from the EU is down by to its lowest point for over 10 years. 30% of your employees mm. are migrant workers. How are you going to withstand that pressure? Well, we've already seen a slight reduction in the percentage of EU workers over the last few years since the referendum. Yeah. But the big thing for us is making us attractive to people generally. Okay. So in the last five years, we've brought all of our housekeepers onto our direct books, abolished zero hours contracts. We give more people more guaranteed hours. We've introduced three new management roles last year to help people who are on part-time work start on the management ladder. And of course, above and beyond, we're working on flexibility. So for working parents, the hospitality industry is a great career choice. Do you foresee that there being a gap in the workforce when we do leave the EU, or do you think the transition will be smooth? Well, the British Hospitality Association suggests that there could be a gap of as many as a million EU workers over the course of the next five years once we leave the EU. So it would be naive not to think there will be a problem. Yeah. People watching will know that there's EU workers almost everywhere in the UK. Yeah. I think you've got to prepare for that eventuality, and I think that's why a smooth transition is so important. OK, so that's already begun. Let's talk about the competition. Um, in a recent survey by which you came below Holiday Inn, IBIS, Best Western and Premier Inn, who are doing particularly well, what's the plan to catch up? Well, we actually outperformed our competitors for each of the last five years, so we must be doing something right. And, of course, this year, regard? for our total sales growth and our occupancy is faster than the market and has been for the last five years. And this, this, year, Travelodge, and this year, Travelodge was named for the first time ever in our history as one of the top ten global hotel brands on TripAdvisor. So on a big sample, I think we're moving in the right direction. OK, um, Premier in, in particular continue to thrive, and a lot of the reviews left are because of the, um, the food. Is there any plans for you to roll out more restaurants? Sorry, in your hotels? Well, we, historically, travel lodges didn't really do food very mm. much. We had little roadside hotels. But now we've got more than 180 hotels with restaurants. We're moving into the city centres. So we're starting to do more and more of that. And our new super rooms even include a Kit Kat if you upgrade to those. Well, so you can't say, say fairer than that. The crucial question on my lips in a travel lodge hotel you never get a biscuit. Well, we like to go for only pay for what you use, and not okay. everybody's on biscuit. If you stay in them as many times as I do, you're not always up for a biscuit every day, otherwise you'd <laughs> balloon. So it's on the super rooms, go for the upgrade. Well, speak for yourself. And finally, 100 more opening. Can you see that growth continuing? Well, that's right. We hope to open 100 hotels over the next five years. That will create about 3,000 new jobs. Um, we do see very attractive long-term prospects for the budget hotels. It's all about managing through Brexit, and that's sort of like waiting for the dentist, isn't it? Isn't it just? Good luck with that transition, um, and good... Breaking news on the biscuit front, Kit Kat's in the super rooms. Mm. He's right, though. Not everybody wants a biscuit. I <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah, I know, that, I know that's worrying for you. And Travelodge has reported rising annual sales, its profits and profits in its latest results out this morning. But it's not the only budget chain doing well. Um, Nina, you've got a few more details and you've been speaking to the boss as well, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. We spoke to the chief exec earlier this morning. Now, lots of people watching will have stayed in a Travelodge. They have uh, 500 hotels across the country and over the next five years, they're going to be opening 100 more. Now, what's particularly interesting about this is just a few years ago, they were £500 million in debt. And when we spoke to the chief exec earlier, we said, how did you turn things around? He said, it's pretty simple. We've made budget better. And as you say, that's happening across budget brands. So Ibis Hotels, Premier Inn, Best Westerns, they've all seen increase in sales as well. And also, if you look at supermarkets, Aldi and Lidl and also Greg's for snacks, they're doing really well. And we're moving towards favouring budget bands as consumers because there's a lot of uncertainty around. Consumer confidence is down, so we'd rather spend less mm -hmm. on an individual spend. And what about uh, the B word? Are they, uh, cause What's ev that, Dan? Every, is it every, Brexit? Every business we speak to, <laughs> it's interesting to see how they are preparing and what their thoughts yeah. are. So what, what do Travelodge say about that? Well, and particularly in hospitality, mm, yeah. Travelodge, for example, 30% of their staff are migrant workers. So what they've said is because EU migration is at a 10-year low, they're trying to bridge that gap in advance by moving people from zero-hours contracts onto staff contracts, hoping they'll stay for longer. But also they're specifically targeting parents who've been out of the working game for a little while and might want to come in on part-time contracts and then build a career within the company and we're seeing that in restaurant chains as well that movement from zero hours to staff contracts so there are changes of